welcome to episode two of the British Jews in the First World War podcast. My name is Charlotte and I'm the project researcher and today I'm going to talk to you about the Jewish community in Grimsby and how they were affected by the First World War. The opening of the Deepwater Royal Dock in 1852 and the arrival of the railway to link with other towns and cities in the UK made Grimsby a popular place to travel through for migrants arriving in the UK from Central and Eastern Europe during the mid to late 19th century. In fact, around 5,000 migrants a year passed through the port at Grimsby from the 1860s onwards. A proportion of these migrants were Jewish, and whilst many would go on to settle in larger towns and cities, such as Leeds, London or Manchester, or go onwards from Liverpool to the United States, some put down roots in Grimsby. So much so that the Jewish population had grown from 87 in 1871 to 450 by 1914. These migrants were largely fleeing the pogroms and ongoing anti-Semitism in countries in Central and Eastern Europe. Many, though not all, were poor, often religious and with limited skills. What they most definitely wanted was a better life. With no welfare system in place, many relied on the kindness of the community already in Grinsby to help them when they stepped off the boat. The Jewish community initially settled around the docks, almost immediately taking advantage of their religious freedom in their new home country with meetings for worship taking place in various private residences from 1865. By 1878, the synagogue had moved to a cottage on Strand Street, still fairly close to the docks, with 20 seat holders on the register. As the population rapidly grew, so did the need for larger and more permanent premises. In 1889, the Sir Moses Montefiore Memorial Synagogue was opened on Heneage Road. With Grimsby's position as a key port, the town was economically a good place to settle, and many of those that did prospered. Many of the new arrivals set up businesses from their homes, such as the Goldstone family. Isaac Goldstone was born in Poland, then part of the Russian Empire, on the 1st of January 1868. He migrated to the UK and initially settled in the Midlands, working as a tailor. Isaac married Rachel Schwartzberg, who was born in Manchester to Russian-Polish parents, in Wolverhampton in 1888, and in 1891 the couple were living with the Schwartzbergs in Cheatham in Manchester. By 1901 the family were back in the Midlands, living in Dudley, and Isaac was running a tailoring business from their home on Back High Street. By this time the couple had five children, Eva, Samuel, Israel, Mark and Percy, Another daughter, Celia, was born in Dudley in 1904, and finally Daniel in Grimsby in 1907. By 1911, the family were permanently living in Grimsby, but they must have been spending time in the town before this, as sons Israel and Mark were born in Grimsby in 1894 and 1895. Isaac became a naturalised British citizen in 1913, by which time he had an established tailoring business out of their home on Cleethorpe Road, and his sons Israel and Mark were assisting. These two eldest boys both served during the First World War, but sadly only Israel would return. Mark enlisted on the 16th of February 1916, initially with the West Yorkshire Regiment, before being transferred to the East Yorkshire Regiment, and embarked on service abroad on the 25th of June, landing in France the following day. Mark spent just over nine months on active service before he was killed in action on the 9th of April 1917. His mother Rachel wrote a letter to the War Office in September 1917, asking for clarification on his date of death and the exact location of his burial, as there had clearly been some confusion. She also mentions that she has spoken with the sister of a man who says he was standing next to Mark when he was killed and was injured himself and taken as a prisoner of war. This man had apparently written home to say Mark was his best pal. Israel also enlisted in February 1916 with the West Yorkshire Regiment and went on to serve in France. He thankfully survived and was demobbed in March 1919 
returning home to continue working in the family tailoring business. Their father, Isaac Goldstone, died on the 26th of August 1937 and left the sum of £2,639.17.05 to his sons Israel, Percy and Daniel. The brothers continued running the business successfully for many years, and many residents of Grimsby, customers and employees alike, remember it fondly. One family which embraced the fishing traditions of Grimsby is the Woods. Israel Wood and his wife Annie were both born in Russian Poland. Israel, much like Isaac Goldstone, set up his own tailoring business in Grimsby, but his sons would not follow in his footsteps. By 1914, all four brothers, Harry, Sidney, Isidore and Mark, were fish merchants, owning their own trawler business. Elder brother Harry even lived in his office at the docks and was initially reluctant to leave the business for service in the army. We know the bus business must have been doing well because in 1918, Harry was able to invest £10,000 in war bonds, over 700000 in today's money. Very few individuals would have been able to invest this much by private means. Sidney, Isidore and Mark all enlisted on the same day in December 1915 and all four brothers would eventually serve together in the Royal Horse Guards as troopers. Isidore's transfer papers from the Royal Barcher Regiment specifically state the purpose of transfer is serving with his two elder brothers. Isidore received a gunshot wound to the hand in February 1917 and spent a month in the Scottish General Hospital in Aberdeen before being invalided out of the army. Mark, just like Isidore, began the war with the Royal Barchers in France, and in October 1916, extracts from letters written to his father, Israel, were published in the Grimsby Mail. In the letters, he is cheerfully optimistic, with one opening, I have come through this severe engagement without the slightest scratch. In another, he tells his father of how many German prisoners his unit have captured, and says, You have it on my authority, the Germans are getting hell, and there is not any doubt why they give it up as soon as they see our boys coming. Mark, like his brother, was invalided out of the war in July 1918 due to a gunshot wound to the neck. After the war, all four brothers would return to Grimsby and continue their successful trawling business out of the docks. One of their trawlers was named Artina after their sister, who also became involved in the family business. Tina Wood went on to marry Nathaniel Blau, who was a violinist and leader of the Savoy Cinema Orchestra in Grimsby during the time of silent films. During the First World War, he served as a private in the Wiltshire Regiment, and later on he became the honorary treasurer of the Grimsby and District Branch of the Association of Jewish Ex-Servicemen, or Ajax. These families benefited greatly from being able to settle in Grimsby and build a life for themselves, having arrived with very little. But by 1905, anti-immigration sen sentiment in the UK had led it to becoming a less welcoming place. The Aliens Act of 1905 declared that undesirable immigrants would be denied entry to Britain. Although it was vaguely worded, the restrictions were mostly levied against Jewish and Eastern European immigrants, who, as we've heard, were largely poor. This is why, when Sarah Pinko arrived at the port of Grimsby in February 1911, she was very nearly turned away by the authorities. Sarah had met Herman Schwartz as a child in Romania, and the pair eventually fell in love and got engaged. Because of an objection to the marriage by his family, Herman left for Manchester in order to make enough money to marry his sweetheart and wrote asking her to join him. After he had been away for three years and was working as a tailor, Sarah's family finally agreed to let her go, on the condition her two brothers accompanied her. When they arrived at Grimsby, however, the brothers were refused permission to remain because of their lack of funds. Immigration officials, however, agreed to allow Sarah to stay in the protection of the president of Grimsby Jewish Committee, Mr Wolfe, and his wife, providing she marry within one month. Mr Wolfe proved to be a true friend 
and introduced Sarah to the Goldberg family, who took Sarah in like a daughter. The couple were married at Grimsby Synagogue on the 22nd of March 1911, with many of the members of the Jewish community in attendance, including two of the Goldberg girls as bridesmaids. A very small community remains in Grimsby, and the synagogue on Henniard Road is still active, despite the declining Jewish population in the town. Follow us on social media, at JewsFWW, for more details. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time as Lola Fraser discusses the role of women in the voluntary aid detachment of the Red Cross.